2018, 29-year-old Grant was unemployed, living rent-free in his parents' guest house in the rural village of Chuliota, Florida. He had not once lived on his own, and had recently been kicked out of an anesthesiology school for lack of attendance, and also fired from a job as a nurse for stealing medication. It was around that time when he decided to experiment with the relatively new realm of online cam sites. These platforms differ from regular porn sites in that they are interactive. We've watched uh, an older version of this a long time ago. This is a man. This We watched a, an older version of this a long time ago. This is a re-upload that's like remade, remastered. Instead of watching a pre-recorded video, users can solicit live performances from models in exchange for money. This allows individuals to watch whatever acts they want, but at a price. Using his brother's credit card, he browsed through multiple cam models spending an average of 20 minutes on each one. Yet it was on the 5th of June when forensics discovered he came in contact with a performer who went by the stage name of Sylvie. And over the following six months, Grant would spend over $200,000 of his family's money on this one model. The entirety of his father's life savings that he had saved up from working as a pharmacist for over 30 years was gone. He had spent $60,000 from his brother's credit card and had also taken a $65,000 loan out on the house. This is the only time where I'm like, man, god damn, like the, the fucking anti-hot tub activists or whatever will sometimes be like, well, it's addictive, it's addictive, it's addictive, like how about how addictive it is like well fuck you you're like these you're allowing this kind of addictive shit to happen on the platform i'm like maybe it is like for this guy individually but holy fuck dude how are you down so astronomically how are you down so cataclysmically that you just rob your friends and family so you can like pay someone online like this it it blows my fucking mind dude Stop saying it's worth it. Yeah, people are insane. They're going to say some unhinged shit. There is free porn. What the fuck, man? Thank you. This is the this is the thing I don't understand. Okay. Oh, you made a JCS style blast off. <gasps> I missed it. True crime react length 53 minutes. Pause one hour and 57 Oh my God, you made it specifically for this one too. It's just like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me that like when free porn and stuff exists, like you, I mean, I guess this is not porn. This is another kind of sex work uh, that revolves around, uh, you know, a personal relationship with this person. It's more parasocial than just like straight up porn consumption. So I guess it has the capacity for people to just like unload their wallets this way. But I just don't, I still don't get it. I literally do not understand. I literally do not get it. I will never understand it. house. When his family found out, instead of calling After the police, pee, Grant was sent to a behavioral rehabilitation facility for online porn addiction. The more we try to run from shame, the stronger it becomes. When Grant got back from rehab on January 4th, his father presented him with a two-page list of rules he was required to follow if he wanted to continue living at home. One of the conditions was that he cease all communication with Sylvia immediately, but it took just three weeks for the family to discover that he had broken the contract and re-established contact with the model via Twitter. On January 24th, when Chad Amato got home from work, he reportedly confronted Grant over his disregard, and the two of them got into a heated argument which almost turned into a physical altercation. Grant was then kicked out of the house, and for the first time in his life, he was on his own. Shortly before 9 a.m. the next morning, police received a call from Cody Amato's girlfriend, alerting them that he had failed to show up to work that morning and hadn't responded to multiple phone calls. They arrived at the residence at 9.17 a.m., and once knocks on the front door went unanswered, they were able to gain access with a knife via the back entrance. Chad, Margaret, and Cody Amato were all found lying dead on the floor with gunshot wounds to the head from a 9mm handgun. Grant became the immediate prime suspect, as a witness statement from Cody's girlfriend advised police of the confrontation that had occurred the night before, as well as the collection of bizarre circumstances that had led to that point. He was traced to a hotel in Orlando. 
for being a cooperative, sir. We appreciate that. Yes, um, some similar county detectives want to talk to you, so we're going to get that handcuffs off of Nothing you. Nothing in your pants, correct? It's just a normal routine when we encounter someone that yes, we sir. want to make sure you're safe. No, now we know you don't have any weapons, we'll, we'll get those restraints off of We watched a different version yeah. of this. We watched a different version of this same story. We're confident you've been cooperative. A long time ago, so years ago, like two or three years ago. Way. He immediately agreed to accompany them to the police. I did not. Yeah, I missed the NoFap promo. You want me to see it again? You want me to watch it again? I'll rewatch it. Like we already watched, we already watched Agent Ross, man. Contact with them. Just where? Where is it? Here. Sent to a behavioral rehab. Or we try to run from shame, the stronger it becomes. When Grant got back from rehab on, I kind of want to watch the whole, like the 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 real, like full version of that no fap, but I'm afraid that like Aiden might be watching right now and he's gonna be like more. He's going to be, like, more uh, committed to his nofap shit. Otto got home from work. He reportedly confronted Grant over his disregard, and the two of them got into a heated argument, which almost turned into a physical altercation. Grant was then kicked out of the house, and for the first time in his life, he was on his own. Shortly before 9 a.m. the next morning, police received a call from Cody Amato's girlfriend alerting them that he had failed to show up to work that morning and hadn't responded to multiple phone calls. They arrived at the residence at 9.17 a.m., and once knocks on the front door went unanswered, they were able to gain access with a knife via the back entrance. Chad, Margaret, and Cody Amato were all found lying dead on the floor with gunshot wounds to the head from a 9mm handgun. Grant became the immediate prime suspect, as a witness statement from Cody's girlfriend advised police of the confrontation that had occurred the night before, as well as the collection of bizarre circumstances that had led it to just that started. Point. He was traced to a hotel in Orlando. And I replayed it too, the parts where I was being peeing. Cooperative, sir, we appreciate that. Yes, um, some similar kind of detectives want to talk to you, so we're going to get the handcuffs off of Nothing you. Nothing in your pants, correct? It's just a normal routine when we encounter someone that yes, we sir. want to make sure you're safe. No, now we know you don't have any weapons, we'll, we'll get those restraints off of you. We're confident you've been cooperative. Everything's good, so we appreciate that very much. Goes a long way. He immediately agreed to accompany them. I will never understand, like, how kind cops are to, like, white murderers. Okay? They're, they're just, like, I guess they see themselves in them or something. Like, I don't know what it is. Like... Like he, he, it's not like this guy is is being pulled over for a jaywalking uh, violation. You know what I mean? Like, motherfucker is a murder suspect, bro. He's like, yeah, you've been real good. I guess they like, you know, game recognizes game. You know that sort of thing where they're just like, you know, he just had a bad day. It, it happens. You know, I, God knows, I wanted to murder my whole family after a long day at work them to the police station and sit down for an interview. Report stated that he wasn't made aware of his trying family. to get a confession, my friend. These guys are not the investigators nor the detectives on the case. These are the first responders. They are not trying to get a confession out of him. They're just trying their job is to detain the person, okay? I I hope you understand. Like this is de-escalation technically, and it is true that this is the right way to police. I'm more so shocked that they behave this way with, like, a fucking white murderer, but they cannot have this, like, semblance of humanity when they are looking at, like, random black people that haven't even done anything that they know of, okay? Do I need to... I mean, we will be playing the Steven Seagal TV show Lawman in a little bit, so you'll see the differences within treatment of, like, random black individuals uh, for the, the crime of like standing outside of their homes or even shaking each other's hands and stuff, you know, you'll see, you'll see what the, what the difference is, I guess. His demise, nor was he advised as to what the purpose of the interview was for. Grant himself didn't once inquire, just reportedly sat silent in the back seat of an unmarked police car, staring out the window for the entire journey to the police station. Did you know why? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Must you bring up black people's oppression every five seconds? Uh, yeah. If we're talking about police 
treatment and mistreatment of individuals, then yeah, I would say that uh, you know the most common victims of police brutality in in the uh, you know at the Hasanabi broadcast where I cover such matters all the time. I'm black as well is just a lot. Okay, well then you should understand, regardless of whether or not you are black, that this is a normal thing to bring up. I'm a political commentator. Don't cap her, chat. Don't fucking say cap. She could be black. She's saying that it's just like, you know, it's it's uh, shitty to like be constantly reminded or something, but... As I tell trans people, for example, when I'm covering issues about trans issues or whatever, I'm not talking to you. If you're a black person and you're in here, clearly, whenever I talk about police brutality, I'm not talking to black people. Black people already fucking know police brutality. I'm trying to educate white people by showing how different it is. You know what I mean? Did you get a lot of coke right now? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll hold off on this. Okay. Hi, I'm Eva. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Just to restate, he has not been told nor given any insinuation as to why he is sitting inside an interrogation room and has not once inquired himself. Hey, we really appreciate you coming up here with us. And but don't you think that's why T-Pain thinks you're right wing? Okay, that's fucked up. Why do you have to bring T-Pain into this? That's fucked up. Okay, that... Why? <laughs> also, no, T-Pain thinks I'm right wing because I say like unhinged, sarcastic right wing shit. Or things like, I love Donald Trump. I don't think T-Pain is like, oh man, that guy's definitely a right winger because I said, black people are mistreated by police regularly. <laughs> yeah, I don't think T-Pain's like, man, Hassan sure covers police brutality um, and, and it's disproportionate impacts on the black community. Sure a lot. Much like many Republicans would, like, that's not, that's not what's going on there. <laughs> he probably hears me say stuff like, I love Donald Trump so much, and then thinks that that's the case. Yeah. You know, anytime during this, you need to stop and go to the bathroom, want to drink, um, saying, just let me know, and we'll be, we'll be happy to get you. Um, my name is Danny Anderson, and... Uh, I'm a deputy Simo County Sheriff's Office Eva. The investigator's initial plan is to establish a friendly connection with the suspect, which can often be a highly effective tactical procedure to elicit a more detailed discourse. Yet on this occasion, something seems to get lost in the endeavor, which you'll just have to see for yourself when the time comes. This is one of the most fascinatingly aggravating interrogations to ever be released into the public domain. Um, so we just want to talk to you a little bit, and we'll get this in and out, be on our way. Okay. Um, full name. My uh, full name is Grant Tiernan Amato. What, what, is there any special uh, nursing degree, what you do, or...? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I have, like, other certifications. Uh -huh. um, but, uh, I mean, with that, like, I primarily worked in the hospital for, I think, five years, five or six years. Well, I, had, I was accused of Grant theft for the third degree back in June of 2018. There was no evidence ever ever presented. All the charges were dropped. Mm -hmm. I had been applying for jobs for the last couple weeks. I got. Oh my god! Oh my god! You're not wrong. He does sound like Asmund Gold. Oh my god! He literally sounds like Asmund Gold. Uh, like three or four callbacks, mm -hmm. um, and then I went on a job interview yesterday for a home infusion nurse job. What time was your interview yesterday? Uh, it was scheduled for 10. I got there at around 9 okay. in the morning. Uh, and then I think we actually had the interview at about 9.45. How'd that go? I mean, it was all good. Uh, they didn't have anything. They said that they'd probably be getting back to me by Tuesday or Thursday okay. this coming week. Get you back to work? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, it's, like, it's a crappy world when, you know, you don't have any money. Sure. You can't you know, do anything, so. Financially, how, how's the, the nursing what you did? I'm sorry, I just don't know that much. Or she knows all about nursing. The nursing, how, how does it pay? How does it pay? Um, I mean, if you work your, your standard three to three, 12 hours a week, you get anywhere between, I'd say, forty-five and $55,000 a year. So, okay. I mean, it's not bad. 
I think my best year I, I made like fifty five thousand. Fifty five. Because I rarely worked overtime. Right. You know, and I was just because I I had the whole plan of going to uh to graduate school, mm -hmm. so I was just kind of using it as a stepping stone right. for that time. Just to pay the bills. To right. You, where you gotta yeah. gotcha. And um, that and, that's, and the, what you were going for, what does that pay? Nurse anesthesia pays. I mean, base like about 150 mm -hmm. up to 175. Okay. Um, high school, where'd you go? I went to Timber Creek. How were you grades? Um, high school in the first two years of college, I was A, B, C. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was in honors in the major program for uh, UCF. Mm -hmm. um, girlfriends. Girlfriends. I had like my high school sweetheart uh, girlfriend um, for about five years and then ever since then no like official girlfriends no flings or anything like that dates here and there dates occasionally but mm -hmm. I mean not really kind of focused on like just getting through the life the life goals that you know I wanted to achieve what do you like to do what do I like to do I like to watch anime what is it oh Sorry. oh, oh. oh dude at this very moment the suspect bringing up his the suspect bringing up his proclivities in anime consumption should be seen as a red flag but given white privilege the detectives quickly overlook the moral degeneracy that this man is demonstrating oh sorry, sorry. No, i don't know what it is i mean i think you said mma and i'm like okay and then then when you start explaining to it i mean i, I guess it, like now it's it's animated um it's like cartoons i guess you could say but it's japanese cartoons oh my god it isn't dude anime anime lovers will never recover from this okay not me though because i'm not a weeb and i hate anime just saying japanese and then they uh subtitle it you speak Japanese? I was going to say, do you understand? I don't. I, I understand a few words. We actually just went to uh, me, my brother, and... Oh, my God. Please say, please... At, if the detectives ask him to say some words in Japanese and he's just like, Wakurimashita! I mean, obviously, like, I've just only seen weebs behave like that. Like, I myself would never do that. Uh, but I'm saying, like, if he just starts saying stuff like that, that'd be pretty funny. And one of my friends, or I guess friends from high school, we went to Japan... In fact, how long have you been out of work? I've been out of work for six months, since June. How did you pay? Good thing I'm not going to Japan at the end of this month. I would never do that. Because I hate anime. Hey, that's a lot of money for to be out of work. My brother. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Other uh, hobbies, PlayStation, other Call of was, Duty. was Fortnite, but then that was starting to get too, like... That's a big deal right now. Yeah. Bro, this is this is kind of funny to watch because it's like this is literally like an LSF commenter, okay? Guy wants to be a streamer, loves anime, loves playing like Call of Duty, Fortnite, whatever the fuck, like video games, okay? And uh, and loves consuming uh the content of sex workers, but also has like a deep just just a just can't fucking live in the world with those things that are his like primary hobbies basically you're all over it and and actually yeah during the time that i was um that i wasn't working as a nurse i tried to do the whole twitch streaming thing what is that um I'm stop sorry, yeah, no, 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 no. he said he wanted to be a twitch streamer dude stop twitch streaming thing what year by the way yeah he was he tried to be a twitch streamer what year what year was this Is a vid from 2019, but what year was he? I think he tried to be a streamer before me. The OG vid's from 2019, but I don't know when he did the murder. I can't check his logs because he's like, he probably became a Twitch streamer before me. But he did have a... I think he did have a Twitch uh, stream. It hurts us there in the mirror, doesn't it? Shut up! Listen, bro. Listen, listen. He does not know how to serve the top of the hour ad break like I do, okay? We already know that. Not because, like, he's in jail and obviously not streaming on Twitch because he's in jail. 
but because nobody does it like I do. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account through Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month or by getting gifted a sub if you're lucky. You know what I mean? Woo! Goddamn. He's live streaming right now. <laughs> Wait, really? At Hasanabi? What? What? Here's the three-minute ad break now, bitch. I guess he tried in 2018. I wonder who he was following. What is that? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. No, you no, 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 no. Kind of uh, where you have to explain a lot of this to us? With, uh, with Twitch, it's you got your mic, and then you have your face cam, and then you, basically people are just watching you play whatever game you're going to say that you're playing. Okay. On virtual Twitch? reality, it was primarily just Beat Saber. So it's like a, a rhythm based. Wait, wait, I want to know what the fuck. Wait, what? He, he had a gaming you PC? Have your face cam, and then you, basically people are just watching you. I want to hear about this part. That you're playing. Okay. I can't believe he skipped through the VR, Twitch, gaming, building PCs. I would never do any of those things, by the way. Bro, this is literally me if I didn't take balding medication, okay? What the fuck? Like, uh, he did VR degen degeneracy shit. On virtual reality, it was primarily just Beat Saber. So it's like a, a rhythm-based game, like Guitar Hero. Apart from that, uh, we really didn't get into too many other games yet. <coughs> we were kind of just focused on Beat Saber. Mm -hmm. But I think we had downloaded a few other where it's just like you're going through like a world and you can interact with the world or something like that. Close with your brother Cody? Let's talk about Cody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me and Cody. Who's older, you or him? He is. I'm the youngest one. I'm 29. He's 31. Okay. My oldest brother, Jason, is 35 to 36 now. Uh-huh. Talk about Cody. Cody. You know, we decided to go to nursing school together. We decided to go to the, the nurse anesthesia school together. But a lot of people thought that it was weird because we did everything together and because we were so close, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, a lot of people understand the bond of brothers. I mean, yeah. The true bond if you're close to your And, I mean, during, like, this whole time, I mean... Wait, he's 29? This motherfucker's younger than me? No, he's not. He was 29 when he did this. Okay, he's older than me. 1989. Even then, though, holy shit, he looks way older, bro. Jesus Christ. I think that's a few examples I've given you. He was... He'd take care of everything. For Always me. there for you. Yeah. You found Always his Twitch? Support. Always there. Yeah, did everything. Wait, for real? Any, um, ever any issues really with him? Bro, you did not... Oh, my God, you found his Twitch. Whoops. It fluctuates and drops you below 60 FPS. Which... Which is not the dream. Sit rep. Potential collapse detected. Relocation to indicate its safe zone is advised. Dude, what the fuck? Yo, the chat is literally CIA, bro. Which is not the Who's he following? Oh my god! Tim the Tatman and Dr. Lupo. That's crazy. From healthcare to streamer, gamer, esports enthusiast, I'm an extremely chill person who throws assault on occasion, but for the most part, bring the laughs and just has fun. Any always a chill room unless we sweat. We do a lot of giveaways, so stick around. Yeah, where's the schedule? We last streamed four years ago. I wonder what happened to him. Donate and tip. He has a sponsor. And is his Twitter, he has a Discord? He had a Discord? What the fuck? We covered this in 2021. Here's my log. Chat, follow up on video. I found Grand Amato's Twitch account from his brother's account. His channel has clips of him showing the same room as the videos and court documents. Dude, you're fucking RTBA. You're so crazy. Whoops. I guess we did, we, we covered this, because uh, we did cover the story, but I don't remember looking at this. Did I just shut this part of my brain out? I remember, like, looking into the story, but I don't remember looking in, and finding his, like, account.
This is his follow list. Tim the Tapman, Average Jack. Dr. Just is like banned. Ninja. Incon, Matty Pocket, The Best Taco, Trail Mix, Gone Vlog, UMG Gaming, Ninja 02 OG, Average Jack, Triple T Clash, Tim the Tapman. See, bro, he would not have been following me because I started streaming after him, I'm pretty sure. These are the most basic FPS gamers. We want to see the live cam following. No, we looked at his brother's Twitch account. Average Jack Castile Mill and Ashes Vault Nation Twitch. This is crazy that you guys found this shit. Hold on. Dude hasn't even caught a ban. Yeah, I mean, dude, what did, what's Twitch going to do for fucking banning him? That's It hurt me seeing his brother's Twitch and Instagram. Oh, he Oh yeah, you found his brother's in uh Twitch. Streamer, by the way, lol. We are nowhere close to a van. We were kind of close to one. What the fuck? You were in that game? Look at the feed. No, I wasn't. Fuck do you we mean? are nowhere close to a van. You just made that up. I wonder, wait, who clipped it? Oh, he clipped his own. These are all, yeah, he probably had no viewers, bro. Classic, like, no viewer Andy, um, you know, clipping his own shit. Well, I mean, I guess this is someone else clipped this. Bro, he has 2K followers. This is the majority of streamers. Yeah, no, I know. I'm saying like this is how everyone is in the beginning. No, I'm not. I'm not being a view count, Andy. You fucking weirdos. I'm saying like I'm. I did the same shit. I did the same shit as well. Everyone has done this. Everyone that's been on Twitch has done this at a certain point. A dominant machine plus Fortnite giveaways. All me, lol. Welp, two dubs. He was a lol W user. He was a lol user. I'm just wondering, like, if anyone else clipped something and it's like RSA Matt, Maddie. And Castile Melon and Mark. Heck wasn't a thing back then. Yeah, I know. No, this is him. Uh, more positive Everybody, thoughts, huh? and then I'll pick one, and then I will whisper you on yeah. here. So even if I'm not on, check your whispers for me, and then I'll ask if you want the winning. If you don't, let me know. If you do, let me know. And then we'll get it to you. My, my thing we'll, says we'll talk about time out. Is that how we're going to do it. I don't have that. Oh, yeah, mine says that, too. Yeah, Twitch chatter's probably fucking made fun of him for being bald. That's why he wore that fucking hat all the time. Just think about that. Who is this guy? Uh, he's the murderer. 
who murdered his whole family that we are uh, talking about right now, uh, that, that JCS's uh, latest video is looking at. No, like I was saying, during this last six months, it, it had been a very trying time. He would, like, have his moments where he would get extremely upset. He has one logged message across all the privately logged channels I can see. It was in Tim's stream in 2018. Use your abilities dot 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 pog. In 2018, 11, 10, at, at 8 p.m., he said to Tim the Tapman, use your abilities dot 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 pog. He was also a backseater, which is, you know, almost as bad. Almost. Like, uh, like, you know, he never gets violent, I guess you could say. But, like, at one point he got so upset that he, like, pushed a cabinet and then it, like, dented into the wall. Yeah, I mean, at least with me, he's always been... Like where he's he's there for me. Like whatever it takes, regardless of what's happening, I'm gonna take care of it for you. And that's your mom. My mom has. Uh... It must have been a bizarre sight for the detectives to witness when a man who had just allegedly shot his mother in the back of the head gave a reminiscent smile when she was brought up in the discussion. She's always been the. Uh... It's kind of like Cody. She's always been the one that focused on me, mm -hmm. and. Um... Wait, were you the baby? You just yeah. were truly the family baby? For my mom. For my chief. Yeah. Okay. For my mom. Um, mom's favorite? Yeah. You know, countless times my dad would, like, come up to me and he'd make, like, me feel, like, he'd try and use things and word things to make me feel guilty so that I would, you know, do everything that I can, like, get a job. Almost and, like a motivation. Right. Uh, and he'd, he'd tell me time and time again that, you know, you're her favorite. I mean, she would do anything for you. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's like, yeah, I don't need to hear that. I mean, that's not what would motivate me. Sure. Um, but no, with mom, I think we yelled at each other a grand total of like three or four times my whole life. Never any issues. I mean, she, it was always, like, right. if there was somebody that I could talk to and, like, Cody wasn't available, I'd always talk to my mom. I'd always let her know what's going on. Um, yeah, I mean, she would help me out through through anything. Okay. Tell me about dad. Dad. Uh, what, does he do? what does he do? Dad's a pharmacist. Okay. Uh, he works for CVS. He's been a pharmacist for, I think, 35 years or so. My dad was a very, like, angry, violent type person. Overbearing? Overbearing. You know, like, baseball practice, it'd be like four or five hours, and he's hurling the ball as fast as I just, I don't, can. I don't understand how, like, it seems like he's from a like an upper middle class comfortable background mom and dad are not like uh you know like overwhelmed like they're good to him he gave his twitch prime sub the doctor disrespect once as well apparently twitch notify deus light just subscribe with twitch prime dude rtba is literally the fucking cia okay Yeah, he's college educated. He's in nursing school. His family helped him out a lot. It's crazy. Just because his father provided does not mean he wasn't abusive, but that doesn't justify murder. First of all, I don't know why you immediately fucking jump to the conclusion that his murdered father was abusive when there is it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like there's any indication and we're like seventh eighth grade trying to catch this stuff belittle you he would belittle me when I was younger the problem I guess was was that I was I was always like the, the jokester, the one that could calm everybody down, make everybody smile. If it was a heated situation, I could say a joke or something and then make everybody kind of move past it. And I was just in the point where it's like, you know, I'm hearing, you know, all this stuff from dad. I'm seeing how much Cody's helping me. You know, mom's stressed out with her job. And it's like, I'm not doing anything. What's the last time your dad put his hands on you? Yeah, he implied that his dad was not nice, okay? 
There's a difference between implying that your dad is not nice, the, the father that you murdered, versus my dad was abusive. What the fuck? I mean, he said... How much. I was just in the point where it's like, and then make everybody kind of move past it. I also, it was a heated situation. I could say a joke or something, and then make everybody kind of make everybody smile. If it was a heated situation, I was all like, and he's overbearing, you know, like angry, violent type person. Overbearing. Overbearing, you know. Bro, there's no better. There's no better indication that chat just carries their own baggage to every fucking point of contention to every point of conversation to like this guy saying my dad was violent and angry and just moving past it and then everybody going oh dude he's clearly abusive to him like like every single instance chat just immediately like oh no i'm gonna take the word of the murderer <laughs> he's trying to subtly imply that there was a murder suicide and he's totally unaware of the murders the problem is that the problem is that he hasn't been told why he's there is chat being manipulated by the dumbest fucking murderer in history jesus yes i don't understand how this guy who said who like briefly alluded to his otherwise all matter of like evidence points to his dad being like understanding and like trying to get him help okay who only got murdered for that by the way for for his kindness and this murderer says oh well you know he was violent yeah he was a very angry man he was violent and and chat goes oh dude abusive literally not a single person in chat said that bro what the fuck are you talking about what, what do you don't make me go back up the fucking do not make me go back up. That was not a one guy moment. So many people in the chat did that. Chat is so fucking delusional. This is the exact same discourse chat tried to push last time we watched this guy. Wait, really? Nobody said it was justifiable. Some chatter linked your old giveaway tweet. Look at this. I'm giving away 2,500 V-Bucks in honor of Fortnite Season 5 and finally hitting 500K followers on Facebook in order to win retweets and subscribe to my YouTube. Damn. Damn, bro. Look at that. Third, woo, look at that. 83 whole likes, baby. Let's go. Done them all. Really hope I win, says Austin Ox in March of 2022. Classic. Worker says, I won this back in 2018. Still waiting for Hassan to deliver. It's too late. Too late now. Did you give away the V-Bucks? I think I did, but I don't fucking, I don't even remember doing the fucking scam. like baseball practice it'd be like four or five hours and he's hurling the ball as fast as an adult can and we're like seventh eighth grade trying to catch this stuff belittle you he would belittle me when i was younger the problem i guess was was that i was i was always like the, the jokester the one that could calm everybody down make everybody smile if it was a heated situation i could say a joke or something and then make everybody kind of move past it and i was just in the point where it's like you know, I'm hearing, you know, all this stuff from dad. I'm seeing how much Cody's helping me. You know, mom's stressed out with her job. And it's like, I'm not doing anything. What's the last time your dad put his hands on you? Uh, the last time my dad put his hands on me would be... I'd... Yeah, that, that one giveaway I did was real, real fucking... Uh... <laughs> was real impactful of me getting a million followers so much so that I forgot I ever even did it. <laughs> you said liar. Okay, let's continue. Chad is doing this to deflect away from the fact that this weeb that murdered his whole family is like staring directly into a mirror, okay? 
Chad is looking at the mirror and seeing that the mirror is looking back and it's scary. So they're like, let's talk about anything else. Like how you lied about your giveaway. <laughs> Say kind of the middle of December of 2018. What happened? It's because, um, you know, with all the money that had been getting spent and just to be clear, the cam model has not yet been brought up in the discussion. The money being spent in this context would simply be his living expenses. Um, I guess just the mix of everything that I've been saying just kind of boiling up in him. Um, and the fact that I was, to him, it seemed like I wasn't concerned about it. So, and then plus I was, you know, I wasn't acting like myself with the jovialness and, you know, sure. all that kind of stuff. Um, my father chose to admit me to like a like an, a depression or an addiction clinic or something like that in four yeah that doesn't seem like a thing that you would do if you're like an abusive absent parent you know what i mean this is why i'm saying like i don't think this family was uh actually abusive or violent It low-key does, though. Bro, he stole $250,000 from them. And instead of taking the matter to the police, they were like, please get help for your fucking porn addiction. I knew both Cody and Grant 2010 to 2011. No way they were... No way they were abusive or violent. Chow was literally assuming he was abusive to sympathize with the killer and make it make more sense. Yeah, that's weird, though. Fort Lauderdale called Cornerstone. When was that? That was December 22nd. Okay. Until I think... Yeah, I played Airsoft with them both. First of all, I don't know if this guy's being honest or not, but I don't give a shit because I don't need, like... I don't need additional evidence to, to make this inference that, like, it doesn't seem like these were abusive parents. Okay. I think uh, January fourth. Did you agree to go? I I didn't, but they said that you know this was your only. Who said? My dad. Okay. And that was in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. Yeah. Did your mom agree to with it? My mom and my brother both agreed, but it was my dad who was like the iron fist. Like this is what's going to happen. Like you know he can't. Why did he say you needed to go? What was his reasoning? Because. Uh, with the way that I was acting, he just, he didn't see that I was doing anything for, like, the positive. Um, you know, and a lot of it just came back to money uh, with him. Uh, he would, he would, like, allow me to, to spend money that he had, uh, like, with his credit card or something like that. But... Okay, I need the anarchist to not chime in anymore, okay? Maybe not physically abusive, but the father definitely sounds emotionally abusive and manipulative. Dude, dude, you motherfuckers are the same people who are like, any kind of parental responsibility is an unjustifiable hierarchy that needs to be abolished, okay? I don't want to hear from you. I don't, okay? If you want your commune to raise your child that you will inevitably have and raise and, you know, give birth to in a fucking bathtub or whatever... You can do that the way you want to do that. Please stop trying to justify or sympathize with the fucking manipulative killer who is lying to the fucking authorities. Every part of this dude's background indicates that he is from a lap of luxury, life of privilege, upper middle class. Dad's a pharmacist, pays for him the whole way. And then this guy ends up fucking murdering his family. Yeah, anti-bedtime oxyone ass motherfuckers in the chat, dude.
Yeah, based on this sociopath's really uncharitable description, his parents seem really bad. You know what's crazy? Even on his like uncharitable description, his parents don't even seem that bad, but chatters are still ready to go out the bat and be like, no, that's actually abusive. Like, because his dad was being demanding of his son who stole $250,000 from him. Like, that's insane, dude. It's like then whenever I did, it was like a huge problem. Okay, so you had one of his credit cards. Yeah. And what were you buying with it? Uh, well, what I was doing is um, over the past four months or something like that, I've been, I've been talking to this woman online. Who is she? Uh, she's, it's embarrassing as it is, she's a, she's a, cam, she's a cam model. A what? A cam model. Do you, right. do either of you guys know that? Nope. Uh, just, just like all the videos, Jeff, you, you have to tell us. A cam model, it's like they... Yeah, right. That motherfucker definitely knows. The way he jumped up, he just, nope. A what? Uh, nope. I don't know. You need to explain it to me. Also, give me the website if you would like to. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll have to log in to do further investigation on what these campsites are about. Don't know what that's about. What's going on now? They... It's like a virtual girlfriend, I guess you would say. Okay. Like that type of situation. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the money went to her. Okay. Where's she at? She lives in Bulgaria. Where? Bulgaria. Where's that? It's over in Europe. It's like... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said, where's that? Sounds like a made-up country. <laughs> Bulgaria? Bull what now? Okay. Like that. You ever been there? No. Okay. Um, so it, wasn't, it wasn't that serious. Okay. So what would you give her money for? Um, just for like the time online with her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was just like that type of thing. And what did she charge? Six hundred dollars for like a like five thousand or something tokens or something like that. So and then it was four hours a night. Um Oh my so, I mean, god. I mean that's basically just where all the like the costs went to was you pay real money for the tokens and then you use the company's digital currency for, okay. for that. So you do that and when did you meet her? I met her um, at the beginning of July. Yeah, at the very beginning of July. Okay, and and still talking to her? Still, yeah. I mean, more just on uh, like Twitter, okay. like just through direct messages. Bro, this is literally Andrew um, Tate, by the way. This is what Andrew Tate was doing. Work, so it's like I can't use the, the <sighs> chatting like that. How much do you think you spent? Hassan's out here realizing that he's being scammed by Amazon? Bro. Yeah, I'm in the wrong business, dog. I don't know why. I mean, this dude, he went into Twitch streaming because he thought it was going to be like that. I didn't even realize it was like that. What is this? Okay, well. Yeah. Well... You know, how many, okay, here, here is my, here is my response to this. What minute are we at right now? 60 minutes and 26 seconds. This is this is for for good overall, okay?
Okay, let's get back to it. On this, because he's kind of pricey. Yeah, probably close to like two hundred thousand dollars. I'd say. Jeez. Yeah. And where'd the money come from? Money came from me, uh, my brother, and then my dad. Did they know where the money was going to? They didn't know that it was going to uh, a cam, a cam model. I, I was about? saying that it was going towards my Twitch streaming, uh, like. Bro, two hundred and fifty grand towards Twitch streaming. His family probably was like, "Yo, this Twitch shit sucks, dog." Two hundred thousand dollars is so much money, bro. That's insanity. Bro, for two hundred thousand dollars, he could have literally flown her out. Okay. He could have spent the $200,000 on flying this lady out, like, basically fucking marrying her, you know what I mean? Giving her a green card, taking care of her. That's bananas, dude. That's like th three days streaming for you? No, that's like one day. I make that in a day, uh, of course. No, like, when he started, I started around the same time. You know how I started Twitch streaming? You dumb motherfuckers, because everyone thinks, like, I, I you know, I... I make a million dollars a day since, like, I was born or some shit. I strapped a fucking PlayStation camera onto my PlayStation, and I started streaming from my PS4. It cost me the price of one PlayStation 4 camera, okay? I didn't even get a computer for, like, the first couple of months. Actually, almost the first year I didn't get a computer. You were streaming like an 11-year-old. Yeah, guess what, Michael? So Felix was right there with me, okay? There you go. Felix and Noah Colvin both exposed. And then Felix also, yeah, you were there too. And then you guys started Chapo FYM. No, not XQC. I'm talking about Felix Biederman. Many people do not know our, our humble beginnings on this platform. Everybody thinks M Hud is just a geo guesser wizard on Chapo FYM, you know what I mean? But we come we come from humble beginnings. Like Put, yeah, like advertising, like putting my name out there and that, that type of thing. So I guess to like bring it all back with why I was brought to Cornerstone, uh, it was a mix of all of those things. It's like he felt like, you know, I, um, he felt like... He needed to be grounded. Yeah, yeah. And so then I was there, you know, I spoke to like the therapist and psychiatrist and all that stuff. I didn't need any medications for anything. Mm -hmm. They had analyzed it as, this is an isolated event. You've been out of work. You have this PTSD from the whole getting arrested thing. And I mean, the last thing on my record was, I think, a speeding ticket back when I was at UCF. They had signed me up, I think, to be there for 60 days. Mm -hmm. But then I was only there until January 4th. So Who paid for that? My brother, Cody. What was the cost of that, you know? 15000 So their final diagnosis of you was what? That I was fine. That you didn't need to be there. Yeah. That I was, I was fine. I told them all about like my living situation and how it had been stressful, and then it got better, and then now it's just stressful again. But they had all just said that it was just this isolated just event. Situational PTSD from right. When I got back, that's where my dad started to get really kind of overbearing, and I mean rightfully so. I know what I did, but it's like with him, it was every single day, hours a day. <laughs> excuse me, hours a day. He'd come home from work, and then he would just talk to me just about the same exact thing over and over and over and over and over again. When was the last time that you and your dad did have, you know, a heated conversation? Uh, it would be Thursday? Thursday. Uh, because one of his rules was that I wasn't allowed to talk to the woman anymore that I had been talking to. Um, but I guess you could say behind the scenes, my mom would let me talk to her through her cell phone using Twitter. So yeah, anyways, on Thursday, he had apparently found out that I was speaking to her again. You know, it wasn't really my intention to continue talking to this woman, but 
it just kind of happened. Uh -huh. um, and then because there was like that emotional connection, I guess you could say, uh, between her and me, like I, I like, you know. Notice how he says only his dad is abusive and his mom is not abusive, you know, despite the fact that he killed both. Uh, because his mom was like kind of letting him do it. And his dad was like firm and saying, you need to cut this shit out. Because his mom, like out of love and, and affection is just how it is sometimes, enabled him a little bit. And the dad didn't. That's why he's abusive. The dad's abusive. The emotional connection. I liked her. She liked the money. Yeah. You know, it felt like, like, like a relationship. You know, I didn't want to just stop cold turkey on it. So Thursday, you're home all day. Yes. With your mom. She works at home. Correct. Yeah. Your dad's at work. What's his normal work hours? Uh, he works until, I think he had to go in early that day, uh, -huh. uh cause he had to start like doing overtime or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he normally works though from like five or six in the morning to, I think he gets home between like 5.30 and six at night or something like that. What time did he get home that day? Uh, he got home at like 5.30 and then, uh, he came in and then he asked me in a calmer state, I guess you could say, like basically the, the leading question of, you know, why do you think we're about to have this conversation? Giving me, I guess, that opportunity to be honest and truthful to maybe tone it down a little bit. I, of course, did what I always did where I kind of didn't admit to it. Uh -huh. um, and then he, he came out and he told me that I had been doing that. He had proof. Yeah. Um, have an argument? Yeah. He kind of you know, pulled me up from the couch, and then he was yelling at me to pack my shit up and just get out of the house. That he was the one who had to be the hammer, and that, you know, why am I making him have to go through this, and all this other kind of stuff. Okay. I had my argument, and then I'm packing my stuff, I'm, you know, taking it out to the car. It took me, like, a couple hours to get as much as I could, just okay. kind of about into there. So I left. Okay. And then what time do you think you left about? Oh, God. 9 or 9.30 or so. He goes on to state that he met up with his brother soon after on the side of the road. I need to mention that, like, the conversation taking place between this person and their, you know, soon-to-be-murdered father is not a conversation taking place between a 14-year-old and their dad. He is, like, 28 years old at this point, okay? He is a whole-ass man, bro. He's balding, okay? Okay. He's got the hairline of a fucking 12-year accountant, motherfucker. He's 29 years old. Sorry, not even 28. I mean, not balding. Okay, bald. Okay, I just, yeah, he's that bald, okay? Road. And what was the conversation? The conversation was basically that he was brought up to speed, you know, and that he would take care of it. He was brought up speed by what? This is Grant attempting to frame his brother for a double murder-suicide. You will see this quote brought up repeatedly from this point forward. He was brought up to speed on, like, why I'm, why I'm out here. Who brought him up to speed? My mom. Oh, so she talked to him? Yeah. He told you that mom had, had talked to him? Right. Do you think that's why Cody left work? According to Grant, Cody had left work a few hours early to meet up with him on the side of the road. Cody had indeed left work early, yet it wasn't to meet up with Grant. It was later proven that while Margaret Amato was sitting at the computer sipping on a glass of red wine, Grant shot her in the back of the head. He then lay in wait for his father to return to the house, then shot him twice in the head as he entered the kitchen. Cody then received a text from his father's number, asking him to come home urgently. Forensics believed that he was very likely pleading for his life soon after he entered the front door. He was found by police with a gunshot wound to the face, lying in the fetal position. His credit card was stolen, with a purchase made to a campsite for $600 and estimated 30 minutes later. I mean... So remember, that's the guy whose actions you were trying to rationalize and justify for the record chatters who were like, oh, dude, he's an abusive victim of abuse, probably. Sometimes people are just fucking freaks, dude. It doesn't always have to have like uh It doesn't always have to have like a fucking, you know, uh, comfortable narrative. In, in my mind, I was just thinking, oh, he had been 
let off work early like three three times already this week. So ten, I was ten, just like ten fifteen minutes. You talk to Cody. Right. You have a conversation, and he leaves to go home. Right. And you leave to go where? And then I stay in that general area just so that if anything happens, somebody like knows where I am. Yeah, I mean, I was staying in that general area, and then I decided to go to Publix. Publix. He just referred to the Publix supermarket parking lot. This is where he used the free Wi-Fi to log on to the campsite with his dead brother's credit card. Which was about what time? Like, between like midnight and one, I think, yeah. And you go to Publix midnight one, and how long did you stay there till? I stayed there until like seven. Was there last night? Talk to anybody? Uh, I just I messaged the girl that I had been talking to so on Twitter. Yeah. On Twitter, so you have to pay for it. Right, right. Did she right. respond back to you? Uh, I think once. The discussion is then brought back to his last meeting with Cody. And then when you left Cody, what did he say he was going to go do? Cody said that he will take care of it. Take care of what? Just the situation that was at hand with whatever he had been updated with from my mom. Did he tell you what he was updated? He had told me that, he had told me the reason why, like, I had been kicked out. Um, but he really didn't give me that much dialogue, like. The funniest is, like, I'm willing to bet that if I, if this was a different kind of community watching this right now, I can't believe I'm getting one guide in hypothetical situations now in other communities, but they would most likely be fucking not defending the guy, but talking about how shameful the sex worker was for causing this to happen. I'm getting, I'm getting zero guide, but like, but you know what I'm saying? Like other communities, you fucking watch this shit. Other chats are probably like, Oh, cam girl fucking stole from him. She's the worst. <laughs> what if the cam girl convinced him to kill his family so they could be together? Have you thought of that? Yeah. I doubt that that happened about that situation you know he was he was miffed a little bit because you know he had just gotten off work and now he has to go deal with this but what was your demeanor like what did cody see you as like were you like scared upset? yeah you... like, i was scared he didn't kill himself immediately after he just killed his whole family because he wanted to steal his brother's credit card and get one last good fap in dude that's why okay 30 minutes after he murdered his brother he went on like a fucking payphone, basically. Like he, he literally used the payphone version of a of public Wi-Fi to do one last, just unholy, unholy fap. Because I mean, like I said, it's the first time that I had been out of the house. We've come and talked to you. Okay. You rode up here voluntarily with us to talk to us. The detective will now initiate the first confrontation. Why do you think we're having this conversation? I honestly don't know, but I'm pretty freaked out at this point because, you know, it's uh. Oh, you're freaked out? Shit, I mean, man. I know, like, how the situation was when I left. You're now about to see the lead interrogator's attempt at getting Grant to confess in a manner so blatantly obvious that the suspect immediately sees through it. Yeah, the cops are not... The cops are not really great on this one, um, especially because we are now two hours into this interview, and this dude is like two hours in. He's just like, yeah, I love anime. The cop is like, Oro, me too. Oh, were they being daijobu to you? Like fucking, oh, what's a cam girl? That's so sick. Bulgaria. It's like, come on, dog. What the fuck? Do your fucking jobs. As a, as a child, we're told the truth always is the best thing to do, correct? Correct. You agree with me? Yeah. And oh. things happen, and things in the heat of the moment, things happen that we wish hadn't happened, but we make, I, I do it myself sometimes, my kids will make me so aggravated, I'll snap at them and then walk away and say, wow, I wish I would not have done that, that was not very adult of me to, to snap at my child for something. Yes, they're wrong, but I should be the adult and not snap at them. Right. Tell me what you think, because I, I can tell by I've done this for a long, long time, and I read people the way they act, and the way they, they talk to me, and the way they answer questions. There's something you want to tell us. I can see it in your eyes, I can see it in your body language, and just your, the way you act. Now's the time. 
now's the time if there's something you want to He's get. like, you know, you got an abusive father. I'm an abusive father to my wife and my children. You know, I'm a detective after all. <laughs> get off your chest. Go on. Come on. Tell us now. And give us an explanation of what's bothering you. Now is the exact time to do it. And I, I, I'm giving you that opportunity um, right now to tell me some, something you want to get off your chest. It's there. I can see it in your face. I can see it in your eyes. You're upset about that night. You're upset about it. You're upset about it. You've been that since we've talked to you. I can see there's something has been bothering you. Even though I don't know you from Adam's house, can't you see things in people that something's really bothering this guy? It's not that, you know, I spent a bunch of money I shouldn't have on this girl. So be it. You did. It's over with. Money can be made back. Something's bothering you. I'm just worried about what is all transpiring from this. I, I think at this point right now, to be honest with you, Grant, you know what it is. Um, it's, it's in your eyes. You're, you're it's in your eyes. Oh, dude, JCS, you didn't have to do it to him like that, literally posting this. Also, this guy, to make matters worse, bro, this dude literally thinks like, a Florida man accused of killing his parents and brothers hopes to get sprung from jail with a little help from reporters and a lot from a kind-hearted millionaire saying he'd be eternally grateful for the generosity. Email sent by Grant Amato, 29, from prison in Sanford to reporters show that the man accused of killing his family after stealing 200 grand from them and then wiring the cash to a Bulgarian cam girl has been trying to raise money in unorthodox ways for a $750,000 bond that was set by a judge in April. I just want to feel the sun again, feel the breeze on my skin, feel the simple pleasures of every uh, feel, feel the simple pleasures every innocent man feels. Amato wrote. Amato also Amato also asked the reporter as well as another journalist from WKMG if their employers would offer anything in exchange for an exclusive interview with the suspected triple murderer. Amato even went a step further with a New York-based videographer asking the man if he could enlist the help of a millionaire to help him with a sizable bond. In another message to Archdeacon, wait, what? He told Colin Archdeacon? What is that, his last name or like an actual Archdeacon? His life still remains as depressing as the day I found out what happened in my home and my subsequent wrongful arrest and incarceration. Bro, it's wild that he's like playing the I'm innocent card. The execution-style shootings of his parents, Margaret and Chad Amato, as well as his brother Cody Amato. The three were found dead a day after Amato was kicked out of his family home in Chuluota in January due to his online relationship with a Bulgarian woman whom he sent $200,000 after meeting her once on, a, on her website called Cam Girls. Amato's bond conditions preclude him from using funds from his parents' estate, and he cannot contact witnesses in his forthcoming trial, including his half-brother Jason Amato. In another message to Archdeacon, Amato said he believed his half-brother's mission is now to make my life that much harder by not believing his innocence. None of Amato's offers were accepted, the newspaper reports. The accuser killer also reminisced on the fonder memories he had prior to his arrest, including a trip to Japan with Cody Amato in December. They all remind me of the family that was taken from me and the brother I loved more than anything in this world, Amato wrote in another message. A true Twitch streamer always making sure to ask Chad for the support of his jail bond. Yeah. I I just don't know what the fuck is wrong with him. Like, he just seems like... His actions are unhinged and insane. But, like, his background and the way he carries himself do not have that level of, like... Like, he's just so narcissistic, I guess. I, I That, like... He seems normal. You know what I mean? Like, obviously nobody is normal and he clearly isn't normal. But when you, but if you were to like listen to him talk and you didn't know what he was fucking doing, it seems like he's like a normal dude. You know what I mean? It's so wild. eyes is, is the view to your soul and it's, it's in your eyes and <laughs> it sounds stupid and people don't believe it like I told you out there in the car did I not tell you 
You may not like what I say, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth every time because I can walk in, walk in, in front of anybody in God and say, I don't care. I told him the truth. And we usually know answers before we ask it. I, I knew, we, me and, and Eva knew everything before before um, we asked you the questions. Now it's the time to, to come to Jesus, be honest, because you're holding something back. I can see it in your eyes. People don't believe that the police will help you, but we are actually here to help you with issues you may have. Um, I think something happened, and you don't want to tell us, but right now is the time to get it off your chest. And I really Yeah, this guy's definitely... Like, I guess everything we know about what he has done and how he has carried himself after <laughs> seems like the absolute worst person to try this on, okay? He ain't, he is definitely not coming to Jesus, and he's definitely not coming to you, cop. really wish you would because it, it will make you feel better in the end. I, I genuinely don't have anything else that I can say about the night or, you know, the, the periods of time afterwards. There's only there's only one opportunity to make that that good impression, and to if we've done something we shouldn't have done, you fess up. You caught your hand in a cookie jar. Detective Dan's approach here is so incredibly outdated and predictable that it actually seems to boost the suspect's confidence. It's the detective, in fact, who gives off a nervous disposition. He'll begin stumbling over his own words while simultaneously mixing. I love when, uh, dude, JC is, uh, Kazume, JC is reading him to filth, dude. It's, this is extremely my shit. Also, he's not even, like, particularly smart. The, the execution-style crime he committed and the subsequent, like, jerking off immediately after with his brother's credit card, they just, that just gives away that he's not, like, a very smart criminal. This guy is... His only shot is hoping that, like, the, the crime scene investigators carry him, okay, at this point. He is so fucking bad. Mixing up his analogies, which never made a great deal of sense to begin with. Y you do it. Now, is there anything else that happened at the house that you didn't tell us, that you've left out, or we haven't asked you, that would be of importance? Um, or during the time that you drove around for those few hours? Did you ever really go back to the house? That you haven't told us about. You'll also notice the female detective interject with something useful every now and then. But unfortunately, she's not the one leading this interrogation. That would be the detective who keeps bringing up Jesus. To a guy who just murdered his family to go jerk off in a parking lot to a Bulgarian cam model. <laughs> <laughs> True! Honesty will get you all the, the things I can do for you beyond that. Bro! Bro! He is, he is operating on a totally different planet, dog. The fuck do you mean? Oh, man, you're going to feel so good when you get this off your chest. No, man. He, he is trying to unload, okay? He's trying to get a load off for sure. As soon as you let him go, he's going to call up the Bulgarian cam model again and rip another fat one, dude. That's the load he's trying to get off. Nothing else. God damn, dude. Like, come on. Come on now. Let Jesus take your soul can't deal with a, someone who lies to me, right. but I'll deal with someone and help them till the end. No matter what, believe it or not, that's just me, and she'll tell you. I'm very... It's, it's <laughs> She's like, huh, yeah, he's a fucking idiot. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to say if I can do something that can help you, I'm going to help you because every one of us make mistakes and do things we shouldn't have done in the heat of the moment to protect ourselves or to protect somebody else. Bro, this guy is literally three seconds away from being like, yo, can you can you loan me $600? Like, I got to do something real quick. <laughs> like, <laughs> he is. He's gone, gone. The fuck do you mean I can help you? Just be honest with me now. It happens. Now's the time. Now, now is the time. So what do you think happened? I think that there was something that obviously happened at the house. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. I know better. Listen to me. I know better. I can help you, Grant, with honesty. I can help you with honesty. We think something else happened before you left the home that you're either afraid of or embarrassed to talk about. See, this is smart. What she's doing, okay, 
is basically saying like, what is, this is a technique that we see all the time from cops. It's like, here, give us what your alibi is and give us what you think happened, okay? So then you slowly start unwinding their fucking idiotic uh, uh, counter. It's smart. That's what you're supposed to do. Thank God she's there. Because this fucking other idiot is going to keep doing the classic Florida detective technique, which is, come on now, just tell us the truth, boy. I love you. Always. Literally always. Like, every time we watch fucking Florida crimes, dude, and an investigator from Florida, it's always like, come on now. Come on, Steven, can you do this? <laughs> come on. Tell me now. Tell me the truth now. It's always like this, dude. How the fuck do they solve a single crime in this goddamn state? Absolutely insanity. But we need to know exactly what happened, because like Danny said, we can place you there at certain times. And so we need to know what happened before you left that house, because you didn't leave with everything being okay. I... I honestly, I don't... She's also making it seem like she has more evidence than she actually does, which, you know, they they do at this point. But, like, she's making it seem like the only evidence they have is, like, oh, um, you know, oh, like, we can place you at the time at the house, you know? It seems like you were there when some of the chaos happened. Go ahead. Explain to us what you think happened, what, you, what honestly happened. I don't have anything else that I can really say. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you even know why... Law enforcement got involved. Like what? What brought us to that home? No. Once you start telling me something that's truthful that I know, then we're gonna have a conversation of exactly what happened. Oh my God! He's like. I mean, you're a smart guy. <laughs> he's trying to try. He's trying to reverse psychology. A person who has basically filibustered an interview for two hours and twenty five minutes. This technique doesn't even work on children, let alone a grown-ass adult who murdered his family and then immediately went off to jerk off to a Bulgarian cam model. You know something's happened at your home. You have law enforcement. He's like, come on now, we're not going to listen to you if you're going to not tell us the truth. He's like, yeah, okay, fine. Can I go now is the answer in that situation. You know what I mean? Very effectively countered away from that. Officer, thank you. You haven't heard or gotten any well, emails. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just scared as to what the answer is. Well, I, you need to help yourself by filling in the blanks of what happened that night so we can give you the answer. Did anything more happen with you and your father besides him grabbing you up from the couch and yelling at you and kicking you out? Anything that at all? Did he... Did he harm you, hit you? No. Draw no. any weapons on you? No. He didn't do anything like that. I mean, he was just yelling. This, this is the time to come to Jesus, to be honest. Oh, my God! I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Shut the fuck up, detective. Shut the fuck up. Oh, my God. This, this is the time to come to Jesus, boy. Come on now. Jesus Christ. Okay, okay. This technique that the detective is utilizing is very effective. He's trying to bore him to death by constantly and consistently talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, hoping that the killer inevitably reveals the unspeakable crimes he's committed and then inevitably end up killing himself. <laughs> we'll see if it's very effective. No more. I'm looking in your eyes. Your eyes tell me exactly that you you are hurting inside. I get it. Brother, I get it. You're hurting. How do you get it? Have you murdered your family? Have you served a top of the hour ad break? You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like when you serve a three minute ad break at the top of the hour and then tell people that if they no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Okay? You don't know what it's like when you tell people, listen, you can also go ad free if you're lucky and get gifted a sub. You don't know, officer. You don't know what I've done. <laughs> Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! Here's the three minute ad break now.
The woman cop is super sensitive and tries to fiddle something out, and then the hawk comes in with a slammer. Come to Jesus, motherfucker. Your eyes don't lie. Please tell us. It's so dumb, dude. <laughs> uh, and this is the only scared. time we can help you. Because once we get to a certain point, there's nothing I can do. It's, it's in the hands of who has it nothing I can do honesty is always the best policy you get you ca get caught stealing a car you admit to it I did it how can I get help what can be thank you Hassan's trad wife let me tell you the rest of my story you're holding and if back. something happened that you were defending yourself then we need to know that if you were protecting yourself because you were in fear then that makes sense bro he needs to leave the room okay he is getting in her way like I'm no big city lawyer. I'm no big defender of cops. But it's very clear that she is just like giving him an out, okay? Like serving him the rope that he will inevitably hang himself with, okay? And this guy just keeps shutting it down to go down this other route, which is completely fucking idiotic. Cuckoo Edgar, thank you for the five, get the subs. But we need to know exactly what happened for you to protect yourself. You can't minimize this. Once a, a wise man told me one time, oh! once a, a bomb goes off, you can't defuse it. What the, the fuck? Wise... What the fuck? Why would you say that? That doesn't even, first of all, no wise man has ever said that. Okay? You just came up with that on the fly. You are exceptionally stupid for thinking that that's good. That also, okay, that saying in this circumstance is the worst thing you can say because you're basically saying, like, you blew the bomb. You're fucked. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> A wise man once told me you can pee without pooping, but you cannot poop without peeing. That wise man was Steven Siegel. What is he doing? Like, I don't even understand. His man friend was clearly a specialist in nuclear fusion, yet most people would already comprehend that a bomb can no longer be diffused once it has exploded. You can't. That's already out. Now is the point to say, how do I put band-aids on myself to minimize the, the, the injuries I have? And we're giving you that opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity. I don't think you're a bad guy at all. I really don't. The what? Detective Why are you saying that? You know this is being recorded. Why would you say that to a guy? Even, like, you're not even trying to fucking get this guy on your good side. You're, like, doing the worst shit. You constantly keep saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. A bomb blew up, and you blew the bomb up. Tell me the truth. You're a good guy. I believe you're a good guy. It's like... No, that's not a good technique, man. That's not a good technique. He's doing the worst techniques, and he's not even using it adequately. He's not doing... He's not doing the right thing, Okay? He's not doing the right technique. He didn't even garner a tent, like support from him to be able to say, like, you can trust me. They're not doing good cop, bad cop right now. Okay? The lady is actually doing the good cop. He's just bad, but not as, like, a, you know, evil. He's just bad, incompetent cop. Fuck. Will now, for some reason, focus on Grant's flaws and the overwhelming embarrassment of the cam girl situation, which is basically the exact opposite of what he should be doing. He seems to get confused about what he's trying to achieve here. He carries a sympathetic tone while essentially roasting the ever loving shit out of the suspect. I think you're going through a very stressful and emotional time right now with being out of work and just dealing with all the problems with, with the arrest. You're probably not used to depending on somebody to pay all your bills. You know, you have to do mom and dad or have to, have to give you money. Cody's having to give you money, and there's a significant debt to people. $200,000, I don't know what I'd do. I mean, mortgage, yeah, I get it, or something like that, or, or a medical bill for my child, yeah, I get it. 
but talking to some girl, you know, in Bulgaria, you know, you said you, you hit it right on the head. You were embarrassed about it, and you have nothing to be embarrassed about. Here, here it is, man. I want to help you. She want to help you. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta come to me with the truth now, because I, I already know the truth. There's a we, reason you didn't go back to the house. There's a reason why you haven't tried to reach out. I mean, it's I want odd you haven't heard from anybody. Yeah, I mean, I must, I just, I don't, I, it's like, it's words that, like, I can't think of to even say. Like, I, I just, I don't know how to even say the words. Well, what, what do you, give me a round about what you're thinking. That somebody in my family's dead. And how does that make you feel if you think, if you're thinking that? I have absolutely no... ability to, to comprehend the Yeah, word. he went from good cop in a matter of moments to bully cop. I know, I heard. Because, like I said, I've been there for my whole entire life. And even though there's been struggles and everything like that, there has never been any issues. There's never been the struggles or the issues like happened Thursday. Never for you. I, I believe you 100%. I believe it's never been like that. But something happened Thursday, unlike anything you've ever experienced in 29 years of your life. Never. And maybe you felt that was rock bottom for you. You were getting kicked out of the house. Your father gave you an ultimatum. I mean, that's... The female detective will now carry out what the male detective was probably trying to do a few minutes ago. She will afford him justifications for the crime, making the gravity of admission less intimidating. You know, you're already dealing with the, the debt, and, you know, now you have to stop talking to this girl, and now you're being kicked out of the home. I mean, that's, I, I can understand how you would. She is so desperately trying to frame a narrative where he looks good, so he'll give in, and he just keeps butting in and ruining it. Feel. I mean, that you'd want to lash out, or, you know, if something happened, you'd want to defend yourself. Sure. Absolutely. But we need to know what happened. I mean, I know, I can tell that you guys are, like, leading me into a certain way of what the only thing we're leading you to is wanting to get the truth from you not trying to make you say something that's not true that's not accurate the truth the end that's it that's all we want is the absolute truth i genuinely don't have anything else that i can say about what transpired the, uh, during the night time so when, when you left your house everybody was fine yeah. And when you left Cody? Everything was fine. Well, we got called to the house because Cody didn't show up to work. So law enforcement goes over there. And can you tell us what we found? No, the only thing that I was told was that Cody would take care of it for me. And that's all that I know. So if anything happened in the home to bring law enforcement there, what would you think happened? that there was a shooting. Between whom? I don't know. Uh, between... Why would you even go there? Why would your mind go to shooting? Cody and, and my dad. Wow. Brilliant. I mean, he is so bad. He's literally... He's always the worst criminals, dude. It's just like, he just, he literally just brought, like, why did he think that people would not assume that he's the one who did it? And it was instead his brother that did it? Like, he killed his whole family and himself? And why would you think that? To protect me, or to help me, or to do something with me. So you're telling me you did not shoot Cody? No. Your father or your mother? No. I mean, I don't know, like, what more I can say. Well, when law enforcement arrived, that's what they found. So, you're the only outstanding child. You're the one that's been having problems with your dad. You're the one that we haven't been able to find. I mean... 
for the record, the female cop is not that good either. Because at this point, she's starting to become contentious. And if you're going to be contentious, the first thing you should have been, uh, the first thing you should have said is, why did you mention a shooting? Like, if you're going to, if you're going to start unwinding, if you're going to start unloading, then you got to go in with, why did you, why did you mention the shooting? Um, we didn't know that there was a shooting. You didn't know that there was a shooting. Why are you suspecting that? Who owns a gun in the family? Does your brother own a gun? Like all of these. Fine for two days. Do you understand now? Why would we would be questioning you about this? Yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't. Like, I mean, I wouldn't be saying like all like, I don't know the, the way to say. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know like what to even say. So if anything happened in the home, you believe it would be Cody and him? Yes. Because I was, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't have, you know, access to anything. We know that Cody didn't shoot your dad. We know Cody didn't shoot your mom. We know Cody didn't shoot himself. There's something. And you still haven't asked us. The that, condition that, of them or anything. That's because I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't know what the normal proceedings are, but I don't, I mean, I... The normal proceedings are for you to be honest about we, what happened. And then we help you understand everything that's going, that's going, to, going on from here on, on out, of what our responsibilities are. And we don't believe you're being honest. We feel that you are leaving something out about what happened in that home. And the evidence tells us what happened in the home. But you need to fill in the blanks. The suspect's composure was finally starting to slip. This was the perfect moment to draw out the silence to see how he'd respond to the pressure. Here's, 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 here's my hand for honesty. I'm an, I am an honest guy. She left. He's like, dude, I can't be in the fucking room with you, man. Come on now. Hold my hand, Steven. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. And when it's all said and done... I'm going to be honest to the very last day that I, I deal with. Bro. Bro. This guy is... They probably made this guy police chief or something, too. You know? They, they love celebrating incompetence, dude. He is the ultimate stop letting this man cook moment. This is the... Deal with you. And then when this, um, when this investigation continues, I'll go on to the next person to be honest with him. I can only do so much with honesty. Honesty, honesty, honesty. Gets so what you are you not telling us? Um, what happened at that home that you know? Jimmy. Did you leave the house with your brother Cody looking like that? Or did you leave the house with your father looking like that? Or your mother? So what she's doing is like trying to trying to fucking get like an emotional reaction out of him by tossing the photos in front of him. Um, the other dude is, is so bad. I'm glad that they switched positions at least. Yeah, they're. Is that how you left your family? No. Nobody, nobody else went into that house. Who left your family like this? If you were the one that's been depressed, you were the one that owes money, you were the one that got into a confrontation with your father. Who did this to your family? If you were trying to defend yourself or something else happened, we need to know now. The female detective does an excellent job at affording him the option to admit to a lesser infraction, which in this case is self-defense. She provides the option while simultaneously building pressure. It's a textbook maneuver and she does it very well. To help you. So tell us what happened, Grant. We're here to listen to you. Grant, need the truth. We're, we're here to make this right. You've got to tell the truth. It's on the tip of your tongue, my man. I get that. It's Did your tough. father go after you and you try to protect yourself? No, I didn't do any of this. Hey, I know. Video surveillance tells me. I can't.
This is absolutely insane. He's literally cutting him off. Literally undermining the female cop's uh, uh, efforts in elicit in soliciting some kind of fucking like emotional response. He's establishing physical contact while saying, "I believe that you're innocent." Told me everything that happened this night. I'm telling you, of people that that you'd be surprised who in your neighborhood has video. And I know that no, but there's only four people was at this house during this time. One, two, three, four. Tell me. You got to tell me, man. You got that, Okay, the, the, you got to tell me, man, shit sucks. But, like, at least he said something that's not that stupid. It doesn't matter. Cops lie all the time. They can legally lie to, to get... They can, le they can legally lie to be able to get whatever they want out of you. So... They can lie about, like, evidence that they have. They can lie about evidence that they don't have. Um, in this circumstance, this is, like, not only allowed, but it's, like, technique-wise, it's the one good thing that he said. Got to tell me. Get over that, over that hoop. The video is, the video, if you're sitting there saying no, 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 and video shows something else, guess what? Big problem. Because it will wind up later on that, that you can't get any help from anybody. A lot of this would... People make decisions on his honesty. Was somebody honest? Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. Didn't fire a gun. None of them did. None of them did. Cody did not go. Or home did your father house. point a gun at you? No, there's there's nothing else that I can say. Your emotions, your demeanor, your body language, your eyes tell me everything I need to see about you. You want to? Okay, if that's the case, why are you making it seem like he's innocent? You're you're literally directly contradicting yourself. Over and over again throughout this entire process, dude. Like, he goes back and forth contradicting himself so much. Like, what's the technique here? You're just, like, trying to emotionally overwhelm this person by confusing them and then, like, hope that in that confusion, he's just like, dude, please shut the fuck up. Yeah, I did it. I murdered my family. Like, is that what the goal is here? Tell me in the worst way. You want to get this, this pain off your chest. Do it. I mean, there's just, there's just nothing else that I can say. So your dad had told you in the past before that he would kill you? Right. For what reason? For, if I basically did anything related to this, again, causing, costing him a lot of money. And Cody knew about that? Right. So when did you learn that your family was dead? I had been worried since last night when I was uh, just in the hotel, but I knew when you guys told me. I mean, like, I knew when you guys had told me. You already knew, though. But I had... You already said... You knew. At any point, did you feel like you needed to reach out to Cody and see if he was okay, or...? I just didn't want to call anywhere. I just didn't want to know. We understand your father was abusive, and we understand that he was the asshole. And if he threatened you, that he was going to kill you when you came back, you were probably in fear, were you not? So did your brother come home to try and defend you, and then this gunfight happened, and you got so scared that you left? This version of... The cop never said he was innocent. He said he wasn't a bad guy. Cops trying to make him say he was pushed to do it. Amazing you can't figure that out. Brother, this cop has gone both ways 11 times in a row, routinely contradicting himself, going good cop, bad cop by himself. She's the one who's painting that narrative. She's the one who's actually framing it that way. Are you the cop, Dragon Aids? This is the guy. The cop is in the chat defending his honor right now. There's no way. ...of events would obviously clear Grant of any wrongdoing. The detective is hoping he takes the bait so that he changes his story and can then be placed under arrest for lying to police. No, I mean, I, I, I had left when I had said that I had left. I, I just don't know where else to go to get you to, to, to come around because... 
it does not make any logistical sense of what you're telling us. It doesn't. If these two got in a shooting, we would know. We would know they shot each other. We'd know that. But why mom? It just got so bad and out of hand, like never it's been before in your life. Never been here before in your life or in your family's life. He's pissed. His future, his retirement, his plans are being upset by you because of the financial cost. I would almost bet this is just a horrible, bad incident that on any other day wouldn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it is a triple homicide. So it it doesn't happen all that frequently. You, you only get one shot at murdering your entire family. You know what I mean? You can't really do it every day. It's not an everyday thing. I mean, this is literally, this is mansplaining, by the way. Like constantly cutting off the female cop to just like butt in with unironically way worse versions of what she's, successfully trying to accomplish is literally mansplaining dude <laughs> but you and me both know as does she what happened that night i just i i don't i don't have the answer for anything else okay this is this is the last time before i'm gonna walk out and then i'm done and i'm done for good when i'm done i'm done done Oh no. Oh no, don't do it. <laughs> this is called this is called admitting defeat technique, okay? Brother, he doesn't want you to be there. If this works, I'm going to lose my mind. He is so fucking stupid, maybe it'll work. Well, turns out he's not done done. Because the suspect cannot yet be detained. He doesn't have enough. Bro, that's crazy. That's crazy. Do you not feel bad for doing this to your family? I mean, I've been getting blamed for the last half a year. He's like actually bitter that he got owned and made himself look stupid because he thought he could leave the room or he thought at least if he gets up this guy's just going to confess to everything okay and when it didn't happen and he realized he can't leave the interrogation yet okay he had to sit his dumb ass back down and now he's just pouting not even looking at his direction this is not a particularly intelligent murderer. The crime that he committed is not, like, clever. He didn't try to hide it. He did a lot of very stupid things. And this guy got outwitted by an otherwise very dumb criminal. And now he's just mad. You know he's going to be extra brutal when he gets back. I mean, he's a detective, so I don't think he goes on, like, beat duty, but... And clearly for everything and I've been trying to move forward into a positive direction and then every day I'm reminded of all the trouble that I had caused and then I keep being told the same thing over and over again but there's nothing that I can do to change it do you regret doing this to each one of your family members I didn't do that to each one of them here, you, you sit in my seat for a minute. Bro, I thought you were gone. Why are you still here, homie? Why are you still here? All it would take for this guy to be completely dismantled is for this fucking idiot, Grant, to turn around and be like, why are you still here? I thought you were going to leave. Sit in my seat. Get out of here. Sit right here. Come here. Sit right here. Get out of that seat. Sit right there, homie. The suspect still isn't sitting in his seat. Two things that happened here today. Two things. You're a guy swimming out in the middle of the ocean, and we're going to give you one of two. Okay, 
analogies should be illegal, okay? Take those away from this guy. Take his service weapon away, but also stop him from ever using a fucking analogy, an example. Uh, fuck it. No more Jesus talk to. He is just the worst, dude. He is so bad. Sit in my seat for a second. Let me tell you. You just sat on Jesus. How does Jesus Christ dick feel in your ass? Because you just sat on him. Jesus was in this room right here on that seat. I made you sit on him. You feel good? You just murdered Jesus with your butt. You're a guy swimming out in the middle of the ocean. And we're going to give you one of two things based on, based on you. You can have a life preserver to keep, to keep from drowning. Or you get the boat anchor. Which one do you want? Because we will give you whichever one you ask for. The life preserver, the boat anchor. I want the life preserver that I've said everything that I can. You, you want it, and I, I believe you do, but you have not said everything you, did, you can say. But there will be a time when you ask for that life preserver. I can't give it to you. He's watched too much television. Like, I've heard this exact same speech more effectively delivered a million times over on TV. It's the classic, like, listen, we can help you out. Okay, you're fucked. I'm going to keep it short and straight with you. You're screwed. We got everything we need. Now, we're here just to help you out. Okay? You can be honest with us, and we'll help you out to the best of our ability, or you can be dishonest with us, and you take the full, we throw the book at you. Okay, that sort of thing. And that's what he's trying to do. But, like, the fucking stupid thing is he can't even deliver that effectively. He's like, yeah, you're on a boat. We'll give you the live raft or we'll give you the, the, the anchor and then the boat anchor will sink you to the ground. It's so dumb. But the real book we'll throw at you, the Holy Bible, Okay. Yeah, that's right. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. If you're honest with me and you're honest with him, I will throw a Bible at you. And that way, <coughs> you will be declared innocent of all crimes. Amen. I can't. Once I cross, once I cross a line, I got to step over. Can't do it. Won't do it. Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the, 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 the last life preserver I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough? You all right, Grant? Okay. I missed her face. Fair enough. Wait, what do you mean? Think about cross. You want it time we ask for that life preserver. I can't give it to you. I can't. Once I cross, once I cross a line, I gotta step over. Can't do it. Won't do it. Think, think, think about that. I want to talk to her for a minute. Think, think about the the the, the last. Life preserver. <laughs> okay, yeah. She's thinking about a lot. I think this is bald solidarity. I'll say it. I'm sorry. You know, this is, uh, you know, this is a space. This is a safe space for the balds, the follically uh, challenged. But God damn it, dude. I, I see bald solidarity. And I got to call it out. He's bald. He sees a man who got bald very early on in his life, and he thinks, you know, he's just like me for real. Okay? Yeah, the, thin, the thinning bald line, exactly. I can give you. Think about it. Take a few minutes just to, to reflect on it, and then we'll come back to you in a couple of minutes, and then we'll go from there. And what happens is what happens. Fair enough? 
the thin hairline. More important than the thin blue line, brother. Need some food, some water. Good, you good to stay for a while longer? You okay? I mean, I just, I just don't have anything more that I can say. I don't okay. know what the next. I'm not keeping here. If you want to stay, well, I'll talk to you till whatever, till you're you're happy with with everything and you're okay. Um, you're not detained. You're not being kept here. Don't want to be here. You don't have to be here. I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. Give me a minute. What? What I'll do is uh, we'll get you up somewhere. I'll give you my card, my phone number. If you want to talk to me, you're more than welcome to call me. Wait, what? What? Okay, yeah. Chatters? Chatters. Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me this isn't bald solidarity. Go ahead. Hassan, it's the classic technique. Just give up. Dude, what the fuck? He saw a lot of himself in this guy, okay? That's all I'm going to say, and it's, that much is clear to me. And uh, we'll move forward from there. Fair enough. Any questions of me before I go, or before, before we walk out? I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Like, what am I uh, like allowed to do? Live your life. He said, you're innocent. Live your life. Hey man, we are right there at it. Jason's here. It's going to be a few more minutes. What I need to do is just for, for our investigation, get some pictures of you. We're going to collect your clothing. As soon as that's done, we'll get Jason here to talk to you. All right. That's so weird. Like, he's like, he's hugging this dude who murdered his family. I'm going to ask you plain out. You, you are not part of it anyway. No. How? When was the last time you saw everybody? Uh, I left the house between like uh, midnight and like 12:30. I want to believe you, Grant, but you're the last person that I could put in that house. And I know what happened over the last six months. Who else can I blame? Who, who, how are we gonna find out who did this? I don't know. I don't have the answers. The shit you did? You could have been in jail. You would have been in jail for years. I know. He's talking about the other, he's talking about the scamming and theft, by the way. Oh, this dude had his life made for him. I'd like to point out his parents dropped 275 grand on him. If he was a normal dude under his conditions, he'd be another crypto millionaire by now, but instead he wasted it all on a Bulgarian cam girl. This is the, this is the half brother. And they covered it up for you. I'm scared for you and I'm scared for myself. And which ironically, by the way, you're right. Uh, someone in the chat also pointed this out. The sad part is parents might be alive if they reported it. Yeah. If he went to prison, if he went to prison, he literally would have fucking, like, the, the family would be alive right now. I don't feel comfortable with you being around me alone. I'm sorry. I could take you physically, but if you have a knife or know where a gun is, I'm fucked. I need you... To be no, I think that this is uh this is a ha he's a half brother I think not full brother right. Oh, 
one is with me, man. I need to have closure. Well, I was told that you would not be have access to be able to contact this woman. Why do you feel the intent to still contact her? By the way, this is this is a very uh, you know it is an incredibly valuable technique called the cops gave up as they often do and are now giving full investigative authority to the fucking civilians once again. Okay. This is literally the same. This is the equivalent of like having, you know, the parents of a fucking school shooting victim take matters in their own hands to try and apprehend a school shooter. That sort of situation. They should have just called in Steven Siegel, dude. It was just the whole emotional thing. I mean, that's, that's okay. all I can say. So are you saying that you love the woman? I feel like I did, yeah. Okay. You feel like you did, so you don't feel that way now? Well, I mean, now it's pretty much, you know, I mean, it's not what it used to be, is all I can say. Because she's aware of what has right. happened in the last several months. Right. It hurt, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, because you can't right. carry that persona that you carried before. I do love you, though. Just remember that. Just like mom, Cody, and dad loved you. Nobody loved you any more or any less. Steven Seagal will be like, I've been I've been an anime character for 25 years. Let me talk to you. Arigato gozaimashita. What do you like? You like Bulgarian camp models? I've been a Bulgarian camp model for 25 years. What kind do you like? You like them when they do anal stuff? You like the butt stuff, huh? Konnichiwa, my friend. Come on. I got you. They want the Punani too. <laughs> Here. Let me <laughs> campsite. A cop's the worst nightmare. <laughs> Let me play you a song real quick. How does this make you feel, huh? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, how does that make you feel, huh, Grant? Does it make you feel things like the Bulgarian, like the Bulgarian cam model made you feel? Look what I can do. I, I played that song. <laughs> you have anything else you need to talk about before we let you go? Because mm -hmm. now's your time. You know that. Mm -hmm. Like Danny said, once you're out of here, you there's no coming back from this. We're giving you every opportunity to tell us what happened in that home that you have not told us. So you're aware that when you leave here, you're not going to have any chance to redeem yourself and tell us the truth after the fact. I understand. And you're okay with that. You can live with yourself knowing that you're not going to tell us the truth. I understand what I can say. Okay. You ready, man? Yeah. Question for you real quick. You don't want to hurt yourself. You don't want to hurt anybody else. Grant was arrested nine hours later at his hotel. They just gave up. They literally did what I was joking about. Like, remember how I said this guy is so bad that they just have to let the crime scene investigators do the fucking load? Like, do the workload for them? I can't believe that that was what happened. That's actually, they just let him go. That's, that's wild. Hotel. His trial began on August 12, 2019. Grant Amato was so obsessed with this woman. You're going to see from the evidence in this case. At 2.53 a.m. on January, January 25th, 
after leaving the house that contained the three dead bodies of his family, the defendant goes to a nearby public's parking lot, logs onto their Wi-Fi, and uses his dead brother's USA a checking account to pay $599.99 to get onto Sylvie's website at 3.02 in the morning. That website was owned by a Andrew Jebediah Tate. It says here he's a British-American webcam business owner. That's what this case is about. It's about his blind obsession with this woman. The end of the world, as he believed it to be, because of his family. By the way, that dude, this dude, if he didn't fucking do all this, is 100% such a fucking mark that he will, would, would absolutely be a fucking Hustlers University subscriber too. Like, zero doubts in my mind about that, okay? You know his ass will be like Mr. Top G follower. Holy shit. And his absolute contempt for those that he held responsible. Verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree premeditated murder. Grant Amato was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Sometimes when the JCS video is about to end, I get this, like, feeling of sadness. I'm like, aw. It's going to be another, like, eight months until we get another JCS video. You know what I mean? It makes me sad. But, yeah, this is what he was doing before he fucking, you know, murdered his whole family. Um, Positive Everybody, thoughts, huh? and then I'll pick one, and then I will whisper you on yep. here. So even if I'm not on, check your whispers for me, and then I'll ask if you want the winning. If you don't, let me know. If you do, let me know, and then we'll get it to you. My, my thing we'll, says we'll talk about is that how we're else? gonna do it. I don't have that. Oh no, yeah, mine says that too. And mine was saying it, Cody, but now I'm back. Oh, but look at that juicy ping, though. This is the guy. And he followed Tim the Tapman, Dr. Disrespect, and some other people. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, did Twitch take down all of his videos? What the fuck? Come on, man. Oh, they definitely... Wait. Oh, no, they didn't. Okay. We were looking at it before. Trying to get a better understanding of what he's like. Have to get these challenges done. Let's see what this one's about. Let's pick it up. It's all that I wanted was the achievement. What is this one? These are the all the oh. clips that he's clipped of himself. And it doesn't seem like there's anyone in his chat. You know what I mean? Clip is too old to see. Chat. Yeah. Mobs all day, please. Yummy. What does mobs mean? In the water. Damn, he sucks. Nice. Yummy. He has 2.4K followers. 
Do we have a uh, do we have his view counts? I don't think we does he You were better at Fortnite? Is there a Sully gnome? So we can see his all time. Oh my god, he had 436 fucking concurrent viewers, dude. What the fuck? That's like not bad at all. What the hell? Averaging like, what the fuck? He was just growing his like average view count too. He literally fucked up by just, you know, murdering his family, obviously. But, like, he could have just not done that and instead just kept fucking streaming. All he had to do was just fucking play Fortnite. Available ranges, 2018. This guy here, who's this? A guy who murdered his entire family. Um, Wait, why, why can't I see his fucking streams? Like, how do I... Not 365. I want to see, like... Oh, he was streaming for two hours. Peak viewers, one, two, one, 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 two. Or how the fuck did he get to like 200 viewers? I don't understand. Did he bought it? Oh, I'm looking at 2017. No, I'm looking at 2018. This is 2018. Oh, it is 2017. A fountain of wisdom. He killed his family. He could have just not done that. I mean, yeah. He played a lot of, he played 53 hours of uh, Smite and his total watch time was nine hours out of 53 hours. So only nine of those hours someone in the chat was watching. His peak viewers were two. He played Fortnite for 17 total hours and his total watch time was one. So I guess the other one is like, maybe it's botted and Sully Gnome is not like actually showing it. Bro, I'm literally clicking on 2017. Please, I am. This is, I'm clicking on 2017. I'm clicking on 2018. It's not, for some reason, it's not doing it. Sully Gnome always has better stats, though. Wait, I don't understand. Than the other one, so. Total hours watched was 11,000. What the fuck? He actually did. He was averaging 138 viewers, 92, 121, 73. He literally was popping off. He got raided. He literally... Dude, I don't... This was after he killed his fam? No. Oh, wait. Do you think it's like people clicking on it afterwards? No. Because this is live viewership. <laughs> Getting real. Osama should have bald. He was tall as hell vibes. I mean, that's true, too.
fuck you mean? Osama was 6'7", bro. He had no business. He was tall for no fucking reason, dog. That's literally true. All the other stuff that he did. Sounds a lot like you are just coping and just simply not accepting the fact that maybe he did average that much viewers. The reason why I'm saying that, and it's very surprising that you don't understand where I'm coming from with this, is that this level of viewership is fucking to die for. Not to do a pun, but like, literally, like this level of viewership is like life-changing. You could be like unironically making money with this level of viewership enough to like maybe especially when your parents are sustaining your uh living conditions like you could totally just keep doing it but instead he was just an absolute psycho i just got here but i love that you're supporting small streamers where can we find this guy in the Florida State Penitentiary.